Welcome back. Well, yes, we do have Professor Babagana Zulum, Governor of Borneo State and Chairman of Northeast Governors Forum, joining us this morning. Good morning, Your Excellency. Thank you for joining us today on the program. Good morning, morning, and thank you very much. Okay, well, yes, you just uh, uh, concluded the Northeast Governors meeting, and uh, the communique did speak on some of the, or at least the issues that uh, the forum addressed uh, yesterday. But then the initial parts focused on security, uh, referencing how there are general improvements in security. So could you tell us uh, what are the indicators that the forum saw to warrant you saying, well, there is general improvement in security in the region? It's cutting. I can't hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, it is right that the security situation in the Northeast sub region is getting better. The, indis the indices are as follows. Uh, within the last two to three months, incidences of attacks have drastically reduced in Borno State. Secondly, unlike before, the military are now offensive to a larger extent. Many, the, the, the insurgents have attacked many communities and the military were able to attack such repairs. Most importantly, the issue of reconstruction, rehabilitation and resettlement is very important because you have seen government of Borno State have started resettling back people to their communities. This is an indication that there is an imagined peace in the region. Another most important thing is also the issue of repatriation of Nigerians that are living in the Republic of Cameroon as well as in the Republic of Niger. A few months ago, government of Borno State as well as the federal government has embarked upon repatriation of our citizens in Minawa camp. Why? Because there is gradual return of peace to the region. And I think these are very important uh, uh, reasons why we say it peace has started returning to the sub-region gradually. People have started returning to their farmlands, areas that have not been cultivated for the last seven, six, seven years. Uh, people have started cultivating it. People have reached, gone up to the, into the hinterlands, especially in the, in the shows of the lecture, to, to start farming. So I think uh, this is something that we need to praise the federal government and then we need to praise the leadership of the Nigerian army and ensure that sustainability is maintained. Thank you very much. Okay, so the, um, I mean, it, it, do you think that a few months is sufficient to come to that kind of conclusion given the <clears throat> nature of this war? Or is it largely about, uh, well, we also need to encourage the security agencies, because you did speak about the importance of sustaining this. So we don't know if you've seen enough on ground to justify or to encourage you saying these actions appear that they will be sustained. Uh, thank you very much. People should take note that issue of security should not be politicized. That is something which is very important. Uh, as I've rightly pointed out, there is a need for us to sustain the momentum. Whether we like it or not, the Nigerian military has to be well equipped. That is one. Whether we like it or not, the numerical strength of the Nigerian military is lean. And therefore, uh, this peace that we are having it now uh, uh, has to be look into again if we want to sustain it i think this is the time that the nigerian army should 
it should gear up towards sustaining the, 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 the recent gains. Otherwise, the entire phenomenon should be wasted. What I'm, why I'm saying that is that right now we have some problems in the shorts of the lecture. We have some problems in the, in the Sambisa Game Reserve as well as in the Mandra, Mandra Hill. So the Nigerian army should not uh, relax by this statement that there is peace in Borno State. There is peace in the Northeast sub-region. What we are saying is truth. Yes, we have started witnessing gradual return of peace into the sub-region, but that does not mean that the problem is over. They have to work hard in ensuring that uh, the, the, rem the remnants of the insurgents are cleared in the shorts of the lecture, are cleared in the Sambisa Game Reserve, as well as in the Mandrakil. Mand well, beyond the uh, intervention of the military, Your Excellency, uh, what else needs to be done to sustain that momentum? I remember on two different occasions, two governors in the north, um, Governor El Rufai and uh, Governor Masari of Katsina State, both of them said that you know there is a, they, they had a challenge of a, re, of, a re, of a recurrence, a resurgence of insecurity in the, in the region because they couldn't sustain the momentum in terms of the contributions that the governors were supposed to be making to ensure that they all sustained the momentum of security that they had secured. That's what happened according to the two governors in the Northwest. In the Northeast, what else can be done beyond the uh, intervention of the military that you have talked about? What else can the governors do on their own to ensure that this momentum is sustained? Uh, th this statement is very important. We have to address the social, political, and economic dimension of this crisis, which is very important. Because there's increasing poverty in the sub-region, uh, uh, that is something that will trigger insurgency. There's increasing put insecurity in the sub-region because put insecurity is the worst form of insecurity. And that is why the Borno State Government, under my distinguished leadership, has been advocating for farming for the last few two years. Farmers should be allowed to go to their farmlands. The Nigerian military should create the enabling environment for farmers to go to their farmlands so that they can cultivate their lands. It is not no more sustainable for our internally displaced persons living in both IDP camps and in the host communities to receive food and non-food items from donor partners. We, people must earn their means of livelihood if we want to ensure that it, this insurgency comes to an end. And I think a uh, mistake has been done before, whether we like it or not. We accumulated a huge number of people in the IDF camps, which is not right. There is increasing prostitution in the IDP camps. There is increasing drug abuse in the IDP camps. There is increasing procreation in the IDP camps. And therefore, the best alternative that we shall do is that government should create the enabling environment that will ensure reconstruction and resettlement of IDPs to their community, into their communities in a dignified manner. That is something very important. The second most important thing is the issue of mercenaries. I've said it many times. The current capability of the Nigerian army is not enough to sustain the military operation in the Northeast. They are doing their best, but I think they are yet to get all the equipment needed to fight the war. What we are saying is that in the interim, they should seek for coalition. In the interim, they should seek for, uh, for external support. That means they should call it mercenaries or they should engage with their neighbors to ensure that uh, they form coalition to fight the insurgents. Because right now, uh, some of the insurgents are coming out in other parts of the country. And we, the Nigerian army, doesn't have all the requirements to fight the insurgents right now. And they are suffering. We are losing many army officers, men and officers in the Nigerian army. And therefore, there's nothing wrong for the Nigerian army to, uh, to, to hit into to our own advice of inviting mercenaries 
forming a coalition with their neighbors to ensure the remnants of the insurgents are cleared, fending when they should get all their requirements to face the insurgents. That's something very important. But unfortunately, they don't listen. And uh, I mean, the whole phenomenon will consume all of us. I've been saying this one for the last four years, since when I was a commissioner. If this thing was done before, honestly speaking, we couldn't have seen the problem of insurgency in the Northwest, as well as in North Central. And you have seen now, uh, that's even affected some, some regions in the Southwest as well as the, in the, in the South, South, South and Southeast. The issue of addressing the social, political and economic dimension of this crisis is also very important. Addressing the issues of farmers' hazards is also very important. Ensure that enabling environment has, has been created to the hazards is very important. This issue of stopping open grazing and others will not work unless if we sit down and address all these issues squarely. I mean, like you said, you've been consistent with this Thank issue you. of raising or engaging mercenaries time and again. And, and I recall the Minister of Defense uh, really saying, well, we're not going to do that. But I, I want to believe that beyond raising this, I mean, in conversations with, I mean, journalists like us, you probably have raised this at the highest level with the president. And I believe reasons were given to you as to why this is not feasible or this will not be done now. But it appears as though those reasons might not be, you know, sound enough for you. What reasons have been given uh, regarding Nigeria's reluctance in engaging mercenaries to prosecute this war? Uh, I have had a series of consultations with them. Mr. President he has never told me that you will not engage mercenaries, but uh, it seems the federal government as well as the Nigerian army have developed a lukewarm attitude towards bringing the mercenaries. They have developed a cold feet. So I think one of the reasons is cost. And then the second reason, to the best of my knowledge, I think the Nigerian army felt that the Nigeria is big enough. Uh, well, 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 no, the Nigerian army of last 30 years, of last 40 years, is better than the Nigerian army of nowadays. It's sad. It's very sad. We're supposed to have uh, gone far in terms of development. But you look at the equipment that we have in the last 40 years are still in existence. Yes, Mr. President has procured some equipment. The equipment are coming. But when will they arrive? That's, that's a serious thing that they should look into it. Because we need to uh, address this issue immediately. Otherwise, the issue will consume the greater part of the nation. But I think I've seen Mr. President uh, 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 as invited member nations of the Lecture Basin Commission. He has interfaced with the President of Niger, President of Chad, and other presidents in the region. Uh, this will go a long way in solving the issues. To the best of my knowledge, although I'm not privy to some of our discussions, but I think the President is looking forward to seeing the issue of the insecurity being addressed at the regional level, which is very important. You can't address the issue of insecurity in Borno State without interfacing with the government of Niger, with the government of Cameroon, as well as the government of Chad. They are very important. Because uh, what about the waterways? Which is also very important. So we need to coalesce, we need to put heads together and then say the right thing. The most important thing is that people don't say the right thing. I mean, the sub region. Yes, yeah, sometimes the Nigerian army are not even, they don't have even enough ammunition. Yes. You can see what our, the outcome of our discussion resolutions at the Northeast Governors Forum. We categorically stated that FIST has started returning to the Northeast gradually. We appreciated the effort of the federal government. But again, we must to say the right thing. The gaps are eminent. The Nigerian army, do, do they have enough vehicles? No. Do they have enough ammunition? No. Do they have enough air guns? No. Do they have helicopters enough? No. Do they have enough strength, numerical strength? No. 
But they are doing their best. But again, we have to say the right thing. The issue of funding. I think uh, the, the nexus between peace, security, and development need not to be overemphasized. You cannot just say we don't have funding. This is never feasible. And we thank God Mr. President has sent a supplementary budget of about 800 billion naira to the National Assembly. This budget, I think, uh, most of the funding is going into the Nigerian military. This is good. I see no reason why if we are providing support for, uh, for social investment of over 800 billion naira, and then we are saying that uh, we don't have money to, uh, to, to procure arms. Security is very important. We have to prioritize our demands. We have to prioritize our objectives. We have to place security as number one priority. We have to address security as number one. We can see some of money, monies are going into many MDS. And, and I believe most of this money are going into the tortuous, bureaucratic melting pots of the ministerial systems. Why not security? Security is essential. And therefore, you construct road. If there is no security, nobody will fly. You decided to spin put internally displaced persons by giving them 20,000, 30,000 naira. Uh, 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 this is not important. Provide, create an, environment, um, uh, create, create an enabling environment that they can be on their own. How? Provide security in such a way that people will move freely on our highways. Yeah, so, Provide well, security in such a way that farmers can engage in their normal farming activities. This is very key. Provide security that will enhance transborder trading. This is very important. Ensure that each and every person in Nigeria will move freely. Mm. And so then it, people will earn their means of livelihood. All right. But you have to say, are you suggesting that there are some politicians, including some persons in the army, who are not telling the president the truth about the current situation and as such, uh, perhaps that's why this is festering to their own benefit. I believe so. But I'm sure that the current crop of military are telling the right thing because I have the privilege to uh, go through some of their requirements. And then, but people should also take note that uh, the financial situation in the Nigeria now is not as good as before. But most importantly, many people are benefiting from this crisis, whether we like it or not. We have some people within our, the political class, within the Nigerian army, as well as within the government, that don't want to see the end of this crisis. This is, uh, this is a pact. If not, how can we uh, fight a war in the Northeast for the last 11 years? Nigeria has, has all what it takes to end this insurgency. But you have to get all things right. Look at our budget in 2019 or 2020, the, 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 budget, the defense budget. 90% of the budget goes into recurrent expenditures. That means, well, yes. And then on the issue of the acquiring uh, equipment, right, right type of equipment sometimes are not procured. The Boko Haram insurgents, the insurgents are, are using what type of equipment? They are using AA guns, they are using AA ammunition, they are using AK-47, they are using uh, the, 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 the Bupalo vehicles. These are what they are using. These equipment can easily be obtained anywhere in the world. Armored personnel carriers are available in South Africa. Armored personnel carriers are available in Turkey. Even propose Nigeria, to some certain extent, they can do something for us. But unfortunately, unfortunately, whether we like it or not, uh, things are not moving well. Again, the Nigerian police are not well equipped. I'm in mean, Borno State. We have about 27 local government areas. In Borno State, I don't think the Nigerian police can boast of having 100 serviceable vehicles. How, how can we achieve? The internal security mechanism is very important. The Nigerian army is overwhelmed. And therefore, the Nigerian police has to be well equipped, has to be well kitted for them to take charge of the internal security, while the Nigerian army should be allowed 
to take over the the, the, the security, the peripheral security in our states, in our own states. It's really to raise governor. But looking through the communique that was released after that meeting, especially uh, coming right after the southern governors met and, you know, gave their position on the 2023 presidency, saying that, well, it should come from the southern region. There were some people perhaps expecting to see something in your communique in reference to that or at least speaking regarding that. But I'd like to find out, uh, haven't heard the position of the southern governors for the north East governors, what is your position regarding that position of the Southern governors that the presidency shall come from the South in 2023? I'm pointing that people are unnecessary overheating the quality. Politics is a game of numbers. Politics is about persuasion. This is very important. But I think you have heard me before. I had a lecture, I did a lecture uh, in, in Lagos as well as in Abuja. I said the time without numbers that I'm of the view that the presidency should ship to the south in the year 2023. This is my position. But there is one statement that I don't like it. A statement that was made by the Nigerian governor, the South Southern Governors Forum. They said the president must go to South uh, Southern Nigeria. Must. Are we not in a democracy era? Governor, Governor Zulum, the term that was used is yes. should. I'm of the view that. I'm of the, I'm of the view that. If you can hear me, the, 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 the operating the, term the, that was used there, pardon me, no, was should. Ca, ca, Governor should come from the can, southern Can you please part allow the, me to say something? Region. Please go ahead. I. I, I, I I have said it time without numbers that I, Professor Babagana Umara, I'm of the view that the president should, the presidency should go for the South in the year 2023. Because the unity of our country is very important. One. Secondly, Inclusivity is very important. Thirdly, I'm in the APC. The last six or seven years ago, APC has zoned the presidency to southern Nigeria, to northern Nigeria, based on the agreement that in the year 2023, the president will go to the south. I'm a Muslim. And then there is a need for me to say the right thing. And that is the right time that the, North, that the Northern governors, that the APC should zone the presidency to the South. I'm speaking about APC. But again, this is politics. We're supposed to meet and then discuss these issues among ourselves, among the political class. This statement that people are saying that the president must go to the South. I want them to remove the word must. The president should go to the South. They are right. They are agitating for their right, as far as I'm concerned, especially the APC governors. This is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that the, what they said is wrong, but they, they have, they, they, there is no need for them to overheat the polity. So we, there's no need for us to discuss this issue in the Northeast Governance Forum because the forum is non-partisan. The forum is non-partisan. And I said it over and again. Even if you zone the president to South-South, the most important thing is that how can we put heads together to ensure that the politicians, that the, the voters will vote for the Southern people of the Southern Nigeria? Because at the end of the exercise, whether we like it or not, the majority carries the board. But as far as I'm concerned, I supported the idea that the, the presidency should go to the South in the year 2023. And I said it before that I'm not interested to become the vice president of the country, neither the president of the nation. But I want to say the right thing. Look at what is happening in the country. And I don't want people to blame Mr. President always. What about we, the governors? We have to uh, holistically look at the entire problem of the nation. Corruption is very high extremely high. So you cannot 
push blame on one single person. Let us sit down and address the issue of insecurity in the nation holistically, rather than say, Mr. Buhari, Mr. Buhari. We have to put heads together and address the issue of corruption. Squarely, which is very important. Yes, marginalization. When we are speaking about marginalization at the national level, what about marginalization at the state level? We have to address all these issues and come up with an amicable solution that will ensure that our country will be in unison, which is very important. Thank you very much. Well, Your Excellency, it's a fine place to live in, but clearly, I mean, there are several issues we need to talk about, solutions above all else, because the country will have to pull together and see that the country works. But I guess we'll have to uh, get across to you much later, such that we can explore and then highlight solutions to moving the country forward. But we do thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Thank you very much. <laughs>